Last week I looked at VPNs and spoke about why it's important to use one, especially if you're logging on from a public hotspot like this cafe. Now, as usual, when I start my research, I did a shout out on Twitter to see if anyone suggests any apps I should try. And a couple of you said, why not make your own VPN using a Raspberry Pi? Well, far be it from me to shy away from a tech challenge. This VPN will let you log on to your home network securely through any device like a smartphone or a laptop from anywhere in the world, accessing your shared documents and surfing the web as if you were at home. Now, firstly, if anybody tells you this is going to be quick and simple, they are most likely delusional. That said, it is entirely possible with a bit of time and a lot of concentration, even if you've got no experience in using a Raspberry Pi or doing any coding yourself. So, if that's the case, set aside an entire day, make sure you have plenty of coffee to hand and get ready for some fun and games. There is literally no point in my trying to step you through it here in the three minutes that we've got today. We'll never cover it. So what I've done is I've created a text document that we've put on our website um, and you can follow that step by very careful step and you will set up your own personal home VPN. It doesn't cost you any money and it's secure because you are going end to end and not through a company, it's just through you. What I've done though is I thought I would just give you a couple of pointers of some of the things that might save you a bit of time and that tripped me up during this process of discovery. First of all, you're going to need to install the Raspbian operating system on your micro SD card. I ran into trouble from the off here because as it turns out, I had a Duff card. Now, the trick here is when you put the card into your Raspberry Pi and power it up, if the green LED light doesn't flash, it's just on constantly, it means nothing is being read from the card. I could have saved myself a couple of hours of messing about had I known that right from the very beginning. Once set up, the first thing you need to do is change the default password because connecting to the internet with a default password that anybody can know is just plain stupid. If you don't want to mess around plugging in keyboards and switching your monitors over, then you can actually operate your Raspberry Pi through an existing computer setup. And to do this, you just need to download and use a piece of free utility software called Putty. You are now ready to step very carefully through the stages that I've listed in my step-by-step -step text guide. The one most important thing you need to do here is concentrate every step of the way. There's a lot of text that you've got to enter and if you get one tiny little typo in there then the whole thing will fall down and you'll have to retrace your footsteps to try and debug your program it's called. You need to issue a password key for all of the devices that you want to be able to connect to it externally. You are now finally ready to download and install the OpenVPN Connect app on your Android or your iPhone device. Um, and once that's connected, what you do is you navigate to where you've stored the password key on your device and just use the software to install it. And you can now use your VPN tunnel to browse more securely through your home connection and access files and folders that you've left on your shared drive at home. You can also give yourself a massive pat on the back because you just levelled up to Geek Level 10. Congratulations. <laughs>